So I grew up in a Mexican household. My mom's from Chihuahua and my biological father is Mexican um, and Chihuahua's in Mexico, but he's Mexican and like a quarter German. My stepfather, which I knew from like six years old, was Salvadorian, El Salvadorian. So he was kind of like the man who raised me and in like this type of Latino household, like Mexican and Salvadorian, there was a lot of like conservative thinking when it came to religion and you know gender stereotypes and how you viewed yourself my mom was a very religious um jehovah's witness so and her being mexican it basically just meant that she was very conservative in terms of like gender roles and how a man should look and behave and how a woman should look and behave and my father being salvadorian he didn't really, he escaped El Salvador during the civic, um, or the civil war. So he moved to America and he didn't really, neither of them got really got an education. Um, I think both of them just passed like middle school and then they like started working or, you know, they moved out and like ran away. I'm not going to go into that though, because it's about me. This video is about me. So, but with them, they carried a lot of their traditional values and, you know, growing up in that religious household, I had to keep my hair short. I had to stay going to church. I had to stay, you know, basically being like a good kid and like, you know, not really getting into trouble and I, trust me, my parents would not allow it. So, um, my parents were very much, in the beginning, it was just like traditional thinking and I was like, okay, well, I guess this is just how it's going to be until I grow up. But also, like, I knew, I, I was a rebellious kid. I always wanted to express myself, whether it was through art, through, like, dancing, singing. Like, I was just all over the place all the time, which I can understand could be a lot to handle. But I essentially was just, you know, a very rambunctious kid. So, um... I was raised in like a household that also suppressed a lot of my identity because I started questioning things at a really young age. I was like, why are we worshiping this God? Why do I have to go to church? Why do I have to keep my hair short? Because I always wanted long hair. I always thought long hair was really gorgeous. So then that's when it started getting like problematic for my parents because they saw that I didn't want to follow their guidelines. I wanted to grow out my hair. I wanted to wear things that they wouldn't allow. I wanted to do things that they wouldn't allow. And yeah, I honestly want to say that my childhood from like six years old up until 18, I really wasn't able to express myself fully. And that suppression of the identity to me is a lot more dangerous than like verbal and, you know, obviously like sexual assault, verbal assault, all of this abuse, like, yes, that's terrible, but suppressing your child's identity can lead to a lot of anxiety, can lead to a lot of identity issues growing up, so it wasn't until I moved out at 19 where I was really able to start growing out my hair and, you know, wearing makeup. Before I started wearing makeup out and about, I had to wear it in secret, like I would paint my face at work and then take off my makeup before I got home. Or if I was going out with my friends, I would keep like, I would carry a bag with me. And that was also something that they didn't approve of because they thought it was feminine or womanly. So it was just like a lot of things that to me didn't make sense, but their values kept this to be upheld. Also, there's a whole thing in like the Latino community about machismo where you just have to be like a manly man. And I wasn't that. I was very much not trying to be that. I was trying to stay soft and like just be myself and like express myself through my art. So that was something that was harder and caused a lot of pain. There were a lot of hard nights, but in the end, I kind of came to the conclusion and I want to say I came to this conclusion around like 15, 16, because I knew that I could not fully be myself living with these people and being queer. I also learned that sometimes the family that you're raised with is not the family that's meant for you because my mom would not accept it. It took her forever to accept my sexuality, took her forever to accept. She still doesn't like accept me fully, which is fine because as a 21 year old, I'm independent. There's no one that can tell me shit. Like 
I answer to myself and myself only. And that's something that's really nice because before I didn't have that, I always kind of had to answer to someone else. And that just led to a lot of um, pain in my eyes. So once I moved out, I was able to really start to grow in my confidence. Now, another thing that I want to address is like the fact that my siblings and my mom, we had this really like toxic relationship and upbringing because we were always fighting. Me and my sister always bringing each other down. And I tried to address this with my mom, but she wasn't having it. And like in the present time, she was not having it. So I basically just had to cut her off and, you know, live my own life and express myself in the best way that I know how. But I think my true confidence started to shine through when I realized that I am a unique person. I am a creative person. I am someone who is reflective and is able to understand that, you know, not everyone is going to like me and that's totally fine. No one has to like me, but also like the most important thing is that you like yourself and you like who you are and who you're turning out to be and you're able to be self-reflective and if the parts of you, if there are parts of you that you don't like, then you change them and you kind of eventually get to a point where you realize like, what do you like? What do you not like? What will you allow? What will you not allow? And that's something that, you know, it's taken me a minute, but I'm finally at a point where I'm really confident in who I am, what I'm about, and just like what I want in life as an artist and as a person. And yeah, I do want to say that like confidence takes time. It's kind of like something that you just have to foster. And yeah, the saying fake it till you make it is definitely relevant because in times where I was not fully confident in myself, I at least had to project that confidence because I know that my surroundings would tear me down if I wasn't confident. You really just have to hold your head up high and realize that the world is going to come for you and you need to be there to defend yourself. You got to be your own biggest fan. You got to be the person who really hypes you up because at the end of the day, let's get morbid. It, you die alone. You're born alone. You have to be your best friend if you're going to survive in this world because the world can get lonely and if you don't enjoy your own company and your own solitude, like, life's going to be harder for you and that's, that's real. Um, in terms of how I started projecting this confidence and actually like fully realizing that like I am a confident person is also just like being gender fluid. It takes a lot of courage and a lot of strength to be someone who is, you know, you know, born a man, but also, you know, adorns himself in a feminine way, whereas makeup, if you're gender fluid, you're strong and you're so important. And if you are someone who is just not in the norm, consider the norm, which to me is really, it's really sad because it's like, why would you spend your time? Why would you spend your life trying to please other people? Because people are not going to like you regardless of what you do. You could be the most perfect person. You could be literally made of gold and someone's going to try and knock you down. Whether it's out of self-hatred, whether it's out of jealousy, regardless, someone's going to try and knock you down. So you really just have to be yourself because at the end of the day, that's like all you really have. And, you know, for me as an artist and for me, like expressing myself through makeup and with my hair... I knew that I could literally be the most passive person and let everyone, you know, I could basically have everyone like me and there's still going to be a reason for someone not to like me. It could literally be the way I walk, the way I talk, the way that my hair is, like, people will find the smallest reasons to dislike you. So you really just have to be your own fan. And the great thing about confidence is that when you are a confident person and you are confident in who you are, people will see that you are being your authentic self. And that really helps find people who want to be their authentic selves as well. And that builds a good community of people around you that, you know, understand the differences in identity, can understand differences in general, and coexist in harmony. I think it's also important to be confident in who you are because confidence is key. And as cliche as that is, it's literally true because... I could have easily spent my life, I could have, okay, 
I could have spent my life literally just listening to my mom. I could have kept going to church, could have kept wearing boy clothes. I could have kept my hair short. That would have killed my soul. Like you really have to realize that at the end of the day, you can try and please the world, but you are living your life. And this is the life that you are responsible for. And at the end of the day, it's something that you have to own up to. Like, do am I living my best life? Am I living the life that I want to be living? And me putting on makeup and making these videos and painting and having long hair and braiding it and like just being myself is way more rewarding and fulfilling than any other thing. So, some tips. One, always spend some time, you know, looking at yourself. And people can come for you and say that you're narcissistic. Obviously, you know if you're being narcissistic or not. You know if you're being self-centered or not. You still want to make sure that you are taking care of the community around you because I feel like life is so empty without any friends or loved ones. But you also want to make sure that at the end of the day, you are taking care of yourself. You are finding ways to take care of your soul, ways to nurture your soul, ways to, you know, grow in your hobby, ways to express yourself better, ways to f take time to, like, find out what you like. And then I think another part is just, like, be... Surround yourself with people that support you. Your authentic self, support what you're about without any conditions. You don't want people who are just going to support you when you look like this or when you behave like this. You want people that can support you when you are trying to have some space, when you're trying to be out in the world, when you're trying to be more feminine. If for me, being gender fluid, it's like, you know, there's times where I'm more feminine, more masculine. My boyfriend loves all of it because he loves me as a person. I've had relationships in the past where they only loved me under certain conditions and that is going to eat away at your mental health. Um, another way to grow in your confidence is just do things that you like and be unapologetic in doing them because doing your makeup, doing things that you like doing is going to help you understand what you like and what you don't like and you can take out what you don't like. You can add things that you like. You know, my tastes are always changing. And just being someone who can address that and realize that, hey, this is something that I'm into. And this is something that I want to continue doing. is going to make you happier in the long run. And people are going to see it when you're walking down the street and you're walking with your head up high. Body language is a huge thing too. For me, I always, I mean, trust me, confidence is not 100% all the time. Sometimes you're insecure. Insecurities happen. That's human. But I try to always walk around with my head up high because there's no time for slouching. Bad posture is not, you know, conductive of confidence. You want to make sure that you look people in the eye. You want to make sure that you are thinking your words through and having meaning behind them. And, you know, we're all human, so we're going to fuck up. And that's totally fine. But... I feel like if you're at least confident in who you are and what you're about, it's a lot easier to not mess up and not basically regret the things that you do say or don't say because you'll know that what I'm saying is what I mean. I mean what I say and I say what I mean and that is another part of being a confident person. Um, if people in your surroundings are trying to tear you down, trying to discourage you from you know, being yourself and living your best life, just know that that's something that they have to deal with. That's an insecurity that they are dealing with. And whether they're projecting it or not, most likely they are. You just have to realize that like that's their issue. And that's their issue to figure out. Let them be. Keep living your life. You know, when I wear makeup out in the streets, people will snicker. And, you know, straight boys will, you know, like make disgusted faces. I don't care. I'm not trying to sleep with them. I'm not trying to be their friends. I'm literally just trying to walk down the street. So, yeah, remember at the end of the day, too, like, if you're nervous in a setting, you're not stuck there. You can leave that space whenever you want. And that's another thing that really helps with confidence is that everything is temporary. You know, being humiliated, being embarrassed, that's all temporary. And, you know, it builds some, builds some spirit because, you know, 
no one is like a perfect angel all the time. You know, we slip and we fall and we get humiliated and that's totally normal. But you just have to remember that at the end of the day, this is something that is not going to be stuck on you and you can always grow past. Let's see. What else? I would also say that if you are a young person, the sooner you get into your confidence and who you are and when you know who you are, the less time you really have to spend having to fix like past behaviors. Because if you're someone who, let's say, is really insecure about your skin, the more you try and hide your skin as opposed to actually like fixing it and finding skincare that works for you as opposed to just covering it up, the more that's going to create some sort of like shield. And people will see when you're trying to hide something or when you have an obvious insecurity because it's pretty easy to like point out. So you just want to make sure that instead of trying to cover up, you really embrace who you are. And if you have a mole that you're insecure about, show it off. Like, let it chill because, you know, unless you have the money to, like, remove these things or, like, get surgery, it's like, you know, why spend time in agony over things that you can't change? Like, I can't change my toes. I'm not going to worry about them. I can't change my hands. I'm not going to worry about them, you know? Every person is so pretty in their own way. And when you really they're even more beautiful when they really when you can tell that they love every part of themselves and it's a year process so don't rush yourself but at the end of the day you want to make sure that the person that you are is somewhat good and you're expressing it to your full capabilities so yeah um i think the last thing i want to say when it comes to confidence is don't beat yourself up if it doesn't happen right away I honestly want to say my confidence barely started to get really solidified this past year, spending time away from toxic people and people who would tear me down. Now I'm surrounded by a community who loves every aspect of myself and not only challenges me to be a better person, but also can understand if there's something that I'm going through and can give me the space to think about it. And yeah, just allow me to express myself to my full capabilities. And, you know, everyone's in everyone's insecure. Everyone has insecurities that they would rather not show the world. But I think it's also important to know that right now we're at a really good point in time where inclusivity and diversity is something that is being cherished and shown. And people are actually talking, walking the walk and not just talking the talk. Like, they really are trying to be inclusive of every identity and... Especially if you're a part of an identity that's a minority, you need to be that representation for the people out in this world. When people look at me, I'm a representation of queer people, I'm a representation of brown people, I'm a representation of plus size people, I'm a representation of all these things. And if anything, my confidence is allowing people to see that if you look or look at any way like me, And if you see me walking down the street in like a super confident strut and I'm just working my shit, then you'll see that it's okay to be yourself too. And that'll just add to the huge pot of people loving themselves and really being able to heal themselves fully without having to project their insecurities and having to bring other people down. You really want to make sure that when you are, in my eyes, you're a truly confident person when you are able to uplift others, shine on yourself and be able to be empathetic and compassionate for other human beings because just being confident and into yourself i mean that's great but to me i don't see any growth and any happiness without seeing other people shine as well so i really hope that if you're watching this you can find something that you love about yourself and you can start kind of nurturing that and realizing that this is what makes you unique this is what makes you who you are and there should be no shame in hiding it and I hope that you know as I'm the generation and as generations come after me I hope that we can just be a a world that is done with the bullshit they're done with the racism the sexism 
change happens really slowly but it's everyday actions you being uh, supportive and inclusive of other people is eventually in the long run gonna have a lot more benefits and a lot more positivity than harm even if all you do is tell yourself that your smile is beautiful once a day you know eventually you'll start loving your smile and you'll start smiling more people will see that happiness inside you and they'll be able to tell that this person really loves themselves and they'll be able to love you for who you are and you won't have to worry about having to create a facade of who you are you won't have to worry about being someone who is just like scared of being yourself that's just my tips on being confident i don't really have any i can't really be someone who gives you that confidence you really have to find that confidence in yourself and you really want to make